brain and spinal tumors affect the central nervous system known as the CNS. They come from different types of cells in the brain and are classified according to the cell type and area of the CNS in which they began. Most CNS tumors start in glial cells, the supporting cells of the brain. Cancerous brain tumors that start in glial cells are known as gliomas and include astrocytomas, ependymomas, and oligodendrogliomas. Another group of tumors arise from embryonal cells. These tumors include medulloblastoma and PNET, that's short for primitive neuroectodermal tumor. Altogether, there are more than 100 different types of brain tumor, most of which are very rare. Tumors classified as low-grade are very slow-growing and remain in the part of the brain in which they started. High-grade brain tumors are likely to be more aggressive in spreading to the brain tissue which surrounds them. This can cause pressure and damage to the surrounding areas. Brain tumor symptoms will vary between age groups. Brain tumor symptoms in babies may include persistent or recurrent vomiting, balance, coordination or walking problems, abnormal eye movements or suspected loss of vision, behavioral change, particularly lethargy, fits or seizures that are not with a fever, abnormal head position such as wry neck, head tilt or stiff neck, or increasing head circumference. Brain tumor symptoms in children may include persistent or recurrent headache, balance, coordination or walking problems, persistent or recurrent vomiting, abnormal eye movements, blurred or double vision or loss of vision, behavioral change, fits or seizures, abnormal head positions such as wry neck, head tilt or stiff neck. Brain tumor symptoms in teenagers may include persistent or recurrent vomiting, persistent or recurrent headache, abnormal eye movements, blurred or double vision or loss of vision, balance, coordination or walking problems, behavioral change, fits or seizures, or delayed or arrested puberty. The signs and symptoms of brain tumors vary according to the type and site of the tumor. If the tumor is low grade, the symptoms come on much more slowly. HeadSmart is a project that aims to enhance the awareness of symptoms of brain tumors in children and young people led by the Brain Tumor Charity. Their website provides detailed information on brain tumor symptoms in children of different age groups. If a brain tumor is suspected, Diagnosis will be confirmed by a brain scan using CT or MRI. Further investigations will be carried out to ascertain the type of tumor and determine the best course of treatment. Brain tumor treatment will vary according to the precise type of tumor, its grade, position, and the extent to which it may have spread. Doctors will carry out a range of tests in order to obtain this information, including taking a biopsy and the use of a CT or MRI scan. The main treatments for most brain tumors in children is surgery. If a tumor cannot be completely removed surgically, or if there's a chance that some cancer cells have been left behind, radiotherapy may be given afterwards. Radiotherapy may also be used as the main treatment if surgery is not possible. However, it is usually avoided in children under the age of three years as there is a greater risk of harm to the developing brain. Chemotherapy is used routinely to treat medulloblastoma and is increasingly being used to treat other types of brain tumors. It may also be used in situations where the tumor cannot be removed completely with surgery. You may be given steroids. These do not treat the tumor but can improve symptoms by reducing the swelling that often surrounds brain tumors. Anticonvulsants may also be given to prevent fits. Other possible treatments may be considered, such as proton beam therapy. This is a form of radiotherapy. Higher doses of chemotherapy, which kill the bone marrow cells as well, can be given but with stem cell rescue. 
Stem cells are collected prior to the treatment and given afterwards. Brain and spinal cancer treatments often cause side effects, and these will depend on the exact treatment being given, but may include the following. Hair loss, tiredness, nausea and vomiting, reduced resistance to infection, bruising, or anemia. These problems are temporary and can be minimized with good supportive care. A number of children may develop persistent side effects as a result of treatment, sometimes many years later, and these are known as late effects. These can include a reduction in normal bone growth, reduced fertility, a change in heart function, a small increase in the risk of developing a second cancer later in life. Children will have regular follow-ups to monitor their progress, to check for any signs of relapse, and for any problems that may arise as a result of the treatment they have received. Treatment by surgery, radiotherapy or chemotherapy may affect a child's physical and intellectual development. The risk is greater in children who are very young as their brain is growing quickly. Thus it follows that different treatments may be recommended for children of different ages. The possible risks of any treatment given will be explained by the child's doctor before treatment begins. The average five-year spinal and brain tumor child survival rate varies widely between tumor subgroups. Can it come back? Relapse means that the tumor recurs either in the same site as the original tumor or in a new site. Both benign and malignant tumors can recur. It is therefore important for the child to have regular follow-up appointments and MRI scans.